Welcome to Electro Online. I was asked by one of the viewers if we had any projectile problems up inclines and then I realized the answer was no. So here we are putting some videos together about projectile motion on inclines. The first example is an object being fired out and I guess I need some initial velocity, don't I? Yes, I'm missing some initial velocity. And let's make that V initial equals to 30 meters per second. And the incline has an angle of 20 degrees relative to the horizontal, and the projectile is being fired at an incline of 50 degrees relative to the horizontal. The question is, how far up the incline will the projectile go when it lands on the incline? In other words, we need to find the x distance, we need to find the y distance, Using Pythagorean Theorem, we can go ahead and find the distance along the incline. Also, of course, keeping in mind that the relationship between x and y can be found through the tangent of the angle phi, in this case 20 degrees. Therefore, x equals y, the height that it obtains, divided by the tangent of 20 degrees. Now, of course, the real question is, how do you proceed? How do you calculate something like that? How do you figure that out? And the key is, that the amount of time that it takes to reach that certain height, distance y, is the exact same amount of time that it takes to reach that distance in the x direction. That's the key. In other words, what we're going to do is we're going to find y in the y direction. So y direction first, and the equation that determines the y direction is y equals y sub naught, plus v initial in the y direction times t, plus one half acceleration in the y direction times t squared. All right, let's plug in and see what we know. Assuming we start on the ground, our initial height will be zero. y therefore equals zero plus v initial in the y direction, which means we're going to need the x and y components of our initial velocity. So we're going to need the y component and the x component initially, v initial in the y direction equals 30 times the sine of 50 degrees. And of course, v initial in the x direction is equal to 30 times the cosine of 50 degrees. So that gives us the two initial components for the x and the y direction. So this 30 times the sine of 50 degrees times t and the acceleration, of course, in the y direction, that's acceleration due to gravity, which is a negative 9.8 meters per second square. This becomes minus 4.9 t squared. Simplifying that a little bit more with a calculator. Take the sine of 50 times 30, which is, uh, well, to two decimal places, 22.98. So we get y equals 22.98 t minus 4.9 t squared. Which means if we knew how long it took for the projectile to reach this point, we would be able to figure out the height at that moment. Since, like I just said, the amount of time that it takes to get to that particular height is exactly the same as the amount of time it takes to get to that distance in the x direction, we can work that same equation out in the x direction and see what we get. In the x direction, we start with the same equation that we had there, x equals x sub naught plus v sub naught in the x direction times t plus one half acceleration in the x direction times t squared. Now, of course, in projectile motion, if there's no forces in the x direction, then of course the acceleration in the x direction will be zero. And in this case, that will be the case. And assuming that x sub naught is zero, this then simplifies to x equals v sub naught in the x direction times time. Plugging in what we know, we can say that x is equal to v initial in the x direction, which would be 30 times the cosine of 50 degrees multiplied times t. Well, which means that t, there's a relationship here between x and t. I can solve this equation for t, but that would have an x in it. I don't want an x in there. But then I have this relationship right here, that x can be replaced by y divided by the tangent of 20. 
So we can say that y divided by the tangent of 20 degrees is equal to 30 times the cosine of 50 degrees times t. In other words, we can say that y equals 30 times the cosine of 50 degrees times the tangent of 20 degrees times t. And then, of course, we have y equals this, and we have y equals this. That means we can set those two equations equal to each other and solve for t. We'll have to simplify that a little bit more, see what we get. So we take the tangent of 20 times the cosine of 50 times 30. We end up at y equals 7.02 times t. If we then plug that in here, over here, we can then say that 7.02t equals 22.98t minus 4.9t squared. Moving this to the other side, we can say that 0 is equal to, and replacing, switching the order, minus 4.9t squared, and that would be plus this minus this 22 minus 7 is 15, that would be 15.96t. Whenever we set something equal to 0, hmm, well, let's factor this first. Let's factor out a t. So 0 is equal to t times minus 4.9t plus 15.96. Okay, that's better. So now what we can say is we have a product of two entities. We have this term right here, t, and we have what's inside the parentheses over here. Multiply these two together, you get 0. That can only be true if t equals 0 or what's in the parentheses equals 0. 0 equals minus 4.9t plus 15.96, which allows us to solve for t. That means t is equal to 15.96 divided by 4.9. 15.96 divided by 4.9 equals, and that would be 3.257 seconds. I'm keeping an extra decimal place just to minimize rounding errors. Now I have the time, which allows us to solve for, well, in this case, we could solve for uh, y using this simple equation right here. And then, of course, since we have a relationship between y and x, we can solve for x as well. So here we can say that y equals 7.02 times t, which is 3.257. So multiply this times 7.02, and we get a value for y equals to 22.87. And, well, let's see here. That's uh, since the units we used was meters per second, we end up with this being in meters. Now that we know y, we can calculate x. x equals y divided by the tangent of 20 degrees, which in this case is 22.87 meters divided by the tangent of 20 degrees. Therefore, x equals 62.82 meters. And finally, since we need to find the distance on the incline that the projectile goes, d is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is equal to the square root of 66.82 squared plus 22.87 squared. And let's see what we get. We square that plus 22.87 squared equals, take the square root, and that would be 66.85 meters. Now we got everything in terms of two significant figures, and so we can go ahead and round that off to two significant figures. So we can say that d is equal to 67 meters, round it off to two significant places. All right, and that's how we work with projectile motion on inclines. Again, the key is to realizing that the amount of time that it takes to reach a certain distance on the incline in the horizontal direction is the same as the time it takes to reach that particular height. 
we use, we use those two equations in the y in the x direction, and then we realize it's the same time, so we can substitute one equation into the other, solve for time, and then calculate x and y, and after that, calculate d. And that's how it's done.